today as well as into tomorrow. That's right, we'll be outlining that thread and kind of timing it out for you as the day goes on. Also this morning, you know, we know your weekend depends on the weather. We've got other stories for you. Yeah, plus weather and even going forward, we're going to outline all the threats for you as the morning goes on. Uh, right now, though, we are talking about very strong thunderstorms that are going to be pushing through eastern Oklahoma. Much of Arkansas, a lot of these storms not quite developing until late this afternoon or more like the evening time frame. But we can't rule out isolated tornadoes, but I think the wind and hail will be the much bigger threat. So let's take a look at the future radar, kind of overlay it with the red. That's your severe threat. And you can see for the most part, the storms leave you alone for any outdoor activity you might have in Little Rock, back towards Antlers, Oklahoma, Texarkana. It's really going to be this evening when we start to see the development of storms. Look at northwest Arkansas from Fort Smith and Fayetteville. These storms diving southeastward. Little Rock by about 10 o'clock tonight. It is dark out except for the lightning flashing across the sky. Thunderstorms begin to cross over the mighty Mississippi as we head towards the midnight hour, affecting places like Memphis and also northern Mississippi. More storms developing back towards Little Rock. Just when you think you're done, you are not. We've got another round pushing through early tomorrow morning, so it's going to be a rough one, not just with the clock change, but with that loud thunder keeping you up. Here's a look at Memphis. The timing for us shows a little bit of rain moving through midday today, but I think the worst stuff is going to come later this evening. That's when we're going to have to watch out for some damaging wind, possibly hail, that could crack your windshield. That's how big some of this hail could get. So make sure everything is put away. The winds could get extra strong as well. So uh, yeah, power outages are going to be a possibility across West Tennessee back into eastern Arkansas. So there's Little Rock. As we go through this evening, we start to see more showers and storms building across the area, especially south of town as we head towards 10 or 11 o'clock. According to this model right here, we've got more activity though popping up on the radar into early Sunday morning. So you might get a little bit of a break between the storms, but not much. And that hail will be loud. We're talking at least quarter size, which is about an inch in diameter. But when we're talking two inches or greater, now we're getting bigger than golf balls. And that is enough to cause some cracks in the windshield, um, cause a lot of damage to crops as well. And this whole area in eastern Oklahoma and Arkansas need to watch out for that possibility. And you know, this time of year, late March, we do look for the greater risk of some of that bigger hail right in that zone, Samantha. So really no surprise that that is in our forecast. The only bad thing is it's been so busy since the start of the year for this entire region. It really has been. And now to have to worry about this tonight. But yeah, we'll be all over it. Of course, uh, we'll talk about sage eventually coming our way too. But yes, we do have that marginal cold air. That is still the situation has been all winter season for the megalopolis along the 95 corridor. And in this case, New York City, it is just a cold rain that we're seeing out of this right now, mid 30s. But north and west of the city up towards Sussex, New Jersey, lower and mid Hudson Valley, you might actually see a bit in the way of snow or wet snow up towards Albany. We've got de-icing at Albany International currently. And even Boston, we're kind of right on that edge of the rain and snow, perhaps going over to snow as we go towards later this afternoon. Down towards the Cape, though, it will be rain for you. Look at the lines of equal pressure kind of close together out here, so kind of breezy along the immediate coastline. A few residual snow showers falling across the Helderbergs as we head towards later on tonight and into tomorrow morning. Some impressive snowfall totals out of Ricardo, though. You can see some areas seeing more than eight, even nine inches of snow. Buffalo Airport, 5.5 inches, and that's one of the few places that we have a surplus for the year. Sam, everywhere else, we're kind of lacking in the snow so far this year. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, Kelly. Well, let's take a live look at... And there's actually an index that shows you the strength of these atmospheric river events. The one we're dealing with right now, Sam, is right about a medium, number number two. But the last one we had last week was more like a three or even four. Yeah, and this is coming on the heels of uh, several of these. Right. Uh, Especially atmospheric at the beginning river. of the year. Yeah, end of December, I think it started in the last day of last year and then yeah. into the beginning of 2023. So basically, you have to watch out for landslides and mudslides. We've had both in either situation. Mm -hmm. Landslide is more of a failure of an entire slope. Mud is when you get all the, the debris, you know, the, the mud, the rocks going downhill. And we've had a lot of road closures as a result of that across the Central Valley of California where we still have several inches of rain on the way. Yeah, so much rain and this terrain is so steep. I mean, mm -hmm. it goes up from sea level very abruptly mm -hmm. up a couple thousand feet. So that's where we can see some of the greatest impacts here. And of course, flooding. Uh, we have flood alerts in place across much of California. And already some flash warnings. If you mm -hmm. look through some, mm -hmm. some small areas up 
up in here, but we've had some thunderstorms. We've had some heavy rain down near Bakersfield as well. Springville, you continue to be under a flash flood warning. So we got to Lair County until 745 Pacific time and the one just south of there, Kern, also in that flash flood warning. And by the way, it's observed. So that means it's happening now. Avoid the area. Right. And a warning always means it is imminent or ongoing. And that's what is happening here in Kern County for sure. Look at our snowpack too. This is pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. And the northern Sierra, we have about 154% of average wow, with that water equivalent part. at 42 inches. I know. Ooh. Southern part, particularly hard hit here. So that would be places like Mammoth Mountain mm -hmm. and uh, Kirkwood even here seeing incredible amounts. 230% of average and snow still to come. We're talking another six feet in some of these locations on top of what they already have. So they're urging any residents mm -hmm. in this area just to be prepared yeah. for long lasting effects from all of the snow and have all the supplies that you need. Mm -hmm. And maybe and stick even to the just, trails, by the way. Oh, yeah, for avalanche sure. Avalanche danger. warnings mm -hmm. in, in place here across uh, really the entire region of Lake Tahoe, stretching over into Donner, down into Kirkwood. Oh, we have some issues with avalanches. Yeah, be careful. Getting the going there backwards there. Goes, yeah. All right, so let's track winter storm Sage. We know it's already affecting us across the Midwest, but what happens when we transfer that energy to the coast? Yeah, it's going to be uh, something to watch as we head into the beginning of the week. We're going to see this coastal low making its way on up the coast and in towards New England, and it depends on that exact track of that low as to who is really going to be impacted by the snow, Kelly. We haven't had a nor'easter yet, and I mean, it's been a while, right? But we also need cold air. That's the other ingredient. Right. And what we need is really strong high pressure to the north. But in this situation, it's really going to be the forcing of the atmosphere to, to really try to get that snow to come down all the way to the coast. We do know that we'll have that wind on shore. That's, that's what makes it a nor'easter, persistent right. northeast wind. And that's what's going to push that water along the coastline, causing coastal flooding. Yeah, that's going to be an, an incredible issue. And then the winds themselves, as we'll see that surface pressure gradient tightening up, blowing some snow around here in New England as we head in through our Tuesday and Wednesday. Those winds really picking up and we could be talking some blizzard conditions potentially mm -hmm. across much of northern New England. Yeah, there's that potential. We could see a lot of snow, especially the interior sections. Boston getting a